Right. Just yes. wondering. Yeah. Awesome. Good. I guess nobody wants to watch us this morning. <laughs> womp, womp. Um, well, let me post the, I'll post the link to the tweet and then you both can retweet it as well. And then maybe we'll get some stragglers joining us. Uh, here is said link. And I will retweet it too. All right. All right. We are on air. All right. We are ready to go. Here we go. Hurrah. <clears throat> it is June 21st, 2018. I'm Micah Sargent. And right now we are going to talk about the new developer beta. Apple just killing it in healthcare. Although maybe that's not right, the right word for it. Uh, iOS 12 fixes. Uh, if you are playing around with the betas, a uh, little bit about air power, some, some hearsay, and quite a bit more because this is the iMore Show. Joining me today, of course, is Lori Gill. Lori, how you doing? Every time every time you do the opening announcement, I want to go do 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 right after it. I don't it just seems like it belongs there. So Jim, if you want to cut that little loop that I just did and include it in every single episode, go for it. Yeah, go ahead and edit our back catalog and make sure that slips in there. Every episode. <laughs> and we are joined today by Serenity Caldwell, the the well-traveled. How are you, Serenity? <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to talk about some betas. Beta, beta, beta. <laughs> beta yes. Beta, uh, beta, beta. In fact, mushroom, mushroom. <laughs> yes. Beta, 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 <laughs> mushroom, mushroom. Um, <laughs> gym. No, just kidding. Um, let's go ahead and kick things off. Uh, we have already received our second developer beta from for for ios for mac os i believe for tvos i mean the whole kit and caboodle um and hopefully soon we'll be uh getting well not we because we already have our hands on the dev beta but hopefully soon folks will be getting their hands on the public beta uh i'm curious sort of uh, now that we've had a little bit of time and we're on to our second beta do you both want to talk about your experiences in beta land thus far sure Serenity, you take this one first. Okay. Uh, so I have made the mistake, well, not mistake. I have made the decision to install the, the beta on all of my devices, including this guy, uh, which actually has been pretty solid, except for this guy. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I actually have been really impressed, especially with iOS. I know this has been said multitude of times across the internet in the last couple of weeks, but the betas for iOS and to a certain extent, Mac OS that Apple shipped at WWDC are really impressive, quite honestly, really impressive. Yeah, I agree with you. I um, have had actually with this guy which i also installed it on um we might we might even be ha we might have very similar watches i don't know i've got the space gray but the same band that you're oh i've got rose gold not rose oh, gold okay. really with, with, the, rose with the pride gold. band that looks, i like it it's it looks good, good with all good of combo. them yeah it's so very nice combo. Uh, but Serenity, yeah. you just showed us a big Band-Aid hand. You have to tell us. What I, <laughs> I really wish that this was actually a good story um, for people who are listening. I have a giant, like, two-sided bandage on uh, the outside of my hand. It's not from a roller derby thing. It's uh, from me trying to break down boxes and getting a paper cut with cardboard. So ooh. I have a little gash on my hand. Uh. A paper yeah, that's... cut with cardboard might as well be getting stabbed with a knife. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> awful, honestly. I, I did it and I was like, oh, I wonder if that'll make a mark. And then two minutes later, I looked down and there's this giant gash. I was like, okay, well, well. That will leave a mark. Yes, exactly. I'm like, okay, so that's, yeah, sadly, nothing nothing roller derby related. Although we did have an awesome tournament this weekend and we won all of our games. Oh, Yay, nice. congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I saw you're going to be in Missouri soon. 
I'm going to be in Missouri in several days. Well, I'm driving to Missouri tonight and then oh I'll be in Missouri God, tomorrow. How do, you do it. I so I, I just commented on this yesterday. You do so much driving and like I like I like to drive a little bit, but I have no idea how you pull it off or in like constantly having to go back and forth. Oh, it would destroy me. It's it's uh, a lot of Okay, I would say a lot of podcasts, but it's a lie. I don't listen to podcasts all that much. What I do listen to, and this is maybe not the best thing in the world, but I put on Netflix shows and then I cover my screen and put it on my my uh, like the passenger seat. And I just listen to things like uh, Kimmy Schmidt and Arrested yeah. Development, uh, anything that has a lot of a uh, lot of speaking and not a lot of like you must stare at the like I tried to listen to the man in Heist Castle because I'd never seen the show before. And I was like, oh, this could be fun. Uh, and literally half the ep half of that pilot episode is like foreboding music, <laughs> foreboding music, <laughs> one sentence, foreboding music. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. I just have yeah. absolutely no idea. I did that actually, uh, whenever uh, I took a trip um, to South Carolina from Missouri, which is like mm. 12 or 14 hours or something. Um, and we drove and we just listened to The Office. Uh, yeah, The there. Office so, like, is a great one. That. <laughs> yeah, that definitely yeah. makes sense. Uh, well, anyway, we should we should get back to, to beta land here. Mm -hmm. um, I was just going to agree with you. Uh, I actually somehow lucked out. I don't know if that's the right word for it. I had a good um, experience where I downloaded the watchOS beta and installed mm -hmm. the one that later got pulled. And for some reason, it did not brick my watch, thank God. Um, and I've since installed, you know, the developer betas that have come out since then. And I've not had um, too many issues. I did have to do one restart because my watch stopped communicating with both my phone and my Mac. And Ooh. so I had to type in my password like an animal on my Mac instead of being able to just get the automatic login. You're lucky so I need you to, remembered it. <laughs> I, need to, I need to just say something, Micah. Uh -huh. um, about watch os have you are you on beta 2 yet have you gotten I the second beta? So. yes yeah yeah i'm on beta 2. well i want to talk to you but i also want to talk to you on my watch <gasps> wait it's out let's I see didn't know it was out connecting to micah <laughs> oh my god I... <laughs> wait, is it... maybe because i have uh do not disturb turned on hold on let me turn that off oh my god <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait i can't wait <laughs> we're doing this live yeah do we're, I need to have walkie talkie open? No, it should just it should just send you a notification, but it can't hurt to open walkie talkie. Uh -huh, I know suggested. Okay, I'm gonna try. Micah is not responding. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> trying to connect to you, it says. How are you? Hello? Hi. Ah! It's actually really fun to do this. Hold on. That did, I don't think that actually sent. So obviously, beta, right? This is yeah. still beta. And this time when I'm pressing down the talk button, I think it took a second. Oh, that's almost immediate that time. That's really cool. Oh my goodness, it's practically live. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this and how the FaceTime audio codec works. <laughs> how fun oh my gosh okay my favorite is the little beeps that happen before and yeah. after because that's total walkie-talkie stuff hello lori via micah, hello, lori via micah. <laughs> yeah you gotta get beta 2 installed i you know you guys i don't i don't i don't so, trust it <laughs> you are correct so here's the thing so here's the thing as much as this is super enjoyable and i've been having really fun with friend of i'm more rich stevens going back and forth to this uh it's still a beta it's still real buggy and it's still real battery hogging this is the yes. thing with the watch os betas um especially if you rely on exercise <laughs> tracking and like you don't want to lose your move counts or anything like that like there are valid reasons to install a watch os beta uh, and that usually happens if you're a developer or if you really need to test, on. <laughs> if you really need to test specific things, um, or like us, if you need to test features before they're released to kind of get a sense of how they work so you can explain them at launch. Uh, but the problem with the betas 
is that they can frequently crash, have bugs. Um, and as we noticed, like my first three messages to Micah didn't go through because walkie talkie wasn't quite working. And even when I started getting them to work, it took a second of me holding down the button before I could talk. These are all things that'll be ironed out in the final releases. But in beta, it's really important to remember that like, if you're gonna install a beta on your device, A, back it up, and B, uh, the scariest thing about installing on the watch is, is if you brick your watch, you have to send it to Apple mm -hmm. to get it fixed. Um, and, and as I much as I, yeah, I go ahead. Saying, like I can't, we can't under like there's or overstate that enough. Like it's not just that you can take it into your local Apple store and they can fix. No, you have to send it away. So like this is a big deal, which is why Lori is like, I don't think I'm installing this. I understand where that comes from. Yeah, this is uh, so if you're a like if you're a casual folk who, who are like, maybe I should install this. I really highly recommend if you are, please make sure you have a backup watch if you actually use your watch and like need it for things, because otherwise you're going to be real cranky and it's not going to like don't brick your watch. Brick, I've done it before <laughs> and bricking your watch really stinks. And especially if you don't back it up, then you're losing activity goals and all of that. And it's, mm, mm, mm. Not really. it's better with health class. <laughs> Do they do a public beta of watchOS or no? They do not for yeah, precisely this thinking. reason. Um, all the other OSs should get public betas, but watch will not because it is very hard to troubleshoot it. And that has to do with the fact that you really can't connect watch wired, like with a wired connection to anything. Um, it does have a diagnostic port uh, inside one of these guys, but you need one of Apple's special tools to connect to it. Uh, and it's not something that Apple sells uh, and it's honestly, it's not feasible for them to sell it. I know some people get cranky. It's like, oh, well, why won't Apple let us fix our watches? And believe me, you know, I've operated on a fair amount of computers. I feel like I'm pretty good at repairing electronics. Um, I've taken a watch apart once for fun. Uh, just And once I got the screen off, I'm like, oh, it's, yeah, it's like doing microsurgery. Like this, the watch is one of the most complex pieces of tech I've ever seen. Uh, and I would not want to operate on it if I was a trained technician, let alone any other thing. Uh, I've included in the show notes an article that I wrote a while back. Uh, it's called How to Downgrade WatchOS on Your Apple Watch. And it basically explains how you cannot and why you cannot. And it goes into sort of the details of how the watch is built and what it takes for Apple to be able to fix it. So that'll be in the show notes for you. Uh, if you're curious, as Rin said, and sort of a little upset, like, why won't they let me fix it? It's it's not easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, with all those disclaimers, should we talk about the cool things that are in WatchOS 5 that we're excited about, Micah? Yeah, yeah. So walkie talkie was my main thing. And so that's why I'm a little disappointed with myself for not knowing that walkie talkie <laughs> should be uh, beta two, because in beta one, when you launched it, it just said walkie talkie is coming soon. Coming soon. Um, yeah. And so I was like, okay, you know, I can wait for it. I thought it was going to be a little bit down the line. Um, so that's the one that has me the most excited. But I'm going to talk about one that, because uh, I, I also uh, maybe we'll include this as well. It was uh, an article about the things that I was most excited about in watchOS 5. And this one doesn't make sense on the face of it, but let me explain why I'm actually super pumped about it. The, uh, the, the program that Apple is doing with some universities uh, around the country that allows people to use their Apple Watch to access their dorm rooms, to uh, pay for their food, to do all these things. And Lori, I think we talked a little bit about this. I'm obviously, I don't, I don't, I'm not at a university, so I don't need it for that purpose. But what it does is it opens up the possibilities for that near field communication that's built into the Apple Watch to be used in other ways, including, you know, getting on the train, including uh, potentially uh, for people who work in, I, I have a friend and some of you people probably know him. It's Joe Steele from the internet. Um, and he is a VFX <laughs> artist and because of that, he works in a building that is locked because there are, you know, trade secrets inside and movies that haven't been released yet. And so he has to have a badge that lets him in. Sometimes he forgets that badge. And if you could just hold out your watch with your company's badge on it, you know, they Apple maybe works with these different HR companies and uh, gets a service set up there. That is so awesome. I love the possibility there. And then let's take that one step further where HomeKit enabled locks 
locks and garage doors and things start to work in NFC and I can use my watch and tap it against my own door and whoop, my door unlocks. What? That would be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the possibility of say, um, using your watch to unlock your car because it's now yes. coded that way too. So yeah. And my yes. favorite of course is Disneyland fast pass. <laughs> yes. Just wave your wave your hand or pick the thing from the new little app. I love all of these plans. Um, and it's really interesting to note there actually was an update to the sort of car consortium for keys uh, today that now allows uh, Apple has like kind of, I guess the consortium has passed, but with some help from Apple, ways to use uh, digital devices as car keys uh, uh. If, if car manufacturers build it in. So it won't just be, you know, Tesla owners being like, oh, oh, oh I can stop my <laughs> car from my phone. Uh, theoretically, it should soon be almost every major manufacturer, which is pretty oh, cool. Really neat. That's super yeah. cool. So I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite features that's kind of like under the radar. I don't think it's really gotten covered, which is you can now pull up Control Center and Notification Center in pretty much any app on watchOS. Um, it just takes, uh, rather than, you know, on a watch face, you can immediately swipe up or down. In an app, you can just tap on the bottom for a second and then swipe it up or tap on the top for a second and swipe down. And it's, you know, originally I was like, well, this of course makes sense because it's what, it's the same kind of behavior that the iPhone has and why not, you know, unify the platforms a little bit. Uh, but in practice, I actually really love it because it means if I wanna turn off notifications, for example, if I don't want those dings to happen, if I wanna turn on do not disturb, I can now do that from the app that I'm currently using rather than having to press the digital crown to go back out to the watch face and all of that it really just makes it more it simplifies it right it makes it a little bit more functional which i really appreciate um and the the other big thing and i think i've mentioned this before but being able to pick your wi-fi networks when you're not in the same place as your phone is really awesome so in the settings app you can now you know if i'm if i'm out and about and i'm at my local coffee shop uh, I can now be like, oh, Nook Wi-Fi, and press that and instantly get the Wi-Fi just on my watch and not so this have to worry is, about having my phone. Does that So this means that you don't have to have already connected to that Wi-Fi on your iPhone at some point in the past. It's its own Wi-Fi connection. That yeah. is really nice. It's do you really know, cool. Do you know whether that's for all of the uh, supported um, series watches, for example, the uh, watch... Uh, Apple Watch 2 or, or 3, are they, is it's, it all of them? It's all watches ex that support I or watch OS 5, which is good. Uh, and of course, if you haven't been to a place before, you're going to need to enter your password, which you can do with the, with uh, either Scribble or with Dictation, which is, again, really cool. Uh, the one caveat there is it still doesn't quite know how to deal with captive portals, which is like... Um, which is the like Starbucks, for example, when Starbucks pops up that interstitial, which is like, welcome to our Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, your Apple Watch won't be able to connect to Starbucks yet, but I will say that it feels pretty good to see those embedded web views show up oh, in mail and in yeah. messages because I'm like, okay, that if, if a small version of WebKit can run on the watch, uh, then theoretically they could see? make captive portals work on the watch too. So it's not it's not necessarily something that's happening yet, but fingers crossed. There's we'll a lot it. of stuff there that's like it, that has potential beyond what we've seen so far. That has me really excited for the future of Apple Watch. And Ren, yeah. I'd love if you could talk um, a little bit about because in my piece, I didn't write a lot about the fitness stuff because it wasn't stuff that I was necessarily excited about. But I do want to note that I had a cool moment. Um, I was at uh, my city's pride uh, event over the weekend. And at one point, uh, I got distracted from my group because I saw the Humane Society was at uh, at pride. And I was immediately like, Oh, got to go over there and see what they are offering so that I can like, Puppies! right. Yeah. So I went over there and there were some pups and everything. And I bought this adorable shirt that said, I thought you were gonna say puppy. <laughs> no, not, no. no, not <laughs> another dog. Um, it says love on it. And the O is a paw and it's like a rainbow paw and it was really cute. So anyway, I, because I got distracted to go over there, I lost my group. And the way the way that they had pride the event set up after the parade, it's in this square in our town. And so I was walking around the square multiple times trying to find my folks. 
And uh, my watch suddenly buzzed me and was like, hey, are you doing an outdoor walk right now? And it was like, oh, exercise, yes. <laughs> so I had this moment where that new exercise detection stuff was really helpful to have. And I you know, got in some extra movement that I wouldn't have gotten counted as an exercise if I hadn't had that. So yeah, I, I, I you guys are going to laugh at all of the times when I talk about how I hate exercising. I've actually been jogging in the morning for quite a while now. <sighs> I know it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> but I never remember to set the the um, the exercise on my. I wear my watch every morning. I just don't set it. So I, any kind of exercise that I'm getting throughout the day, I just never remember to activate it on my phone. So this will be really nice. It'll automatically remind me and automatically remind me to shut it off because the few times that I did turn it on, I would forget to turn it off. So it messes with your sort of calculations and calorie burns and mm -hmm. heart rate and all that because you've just spent 10 minutes not jogging or whatever. So <clears throat> it'll be really nice to have that that feature in watchOS 5. I am still not going to download the dev beta on it. I'm sorry. I am, I am going fair. to be like every person I that understand. should do this, which is don't do it unless you have a spare watch and you're an actual developer and actually need to do something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with the automatic workout detection. I've gotten some start prompts, but more importantly, uh, so Apple notes, of course, that their end prompts right now and their start prompts are only designed for specific workouts, uh, just because it's easier and harder for them to detect certain things than it is for others. Uh, so there's no automatic start for my workout of choice, which is an other workout that's named skating. But what I did notice, and I got really excited about, and maybe it's a beta bug, but I'm secretly like knocking on wood and hoping that it stays, is that named other workouts like my skating workout will automatically prompt to end and it's worked for me three times so far like it it triggers almost every single time about seven to ten minutes after i finish skating while i'm in the car it says hey you want to finish your workout are you done and i'm like yes yes i am thank you because otherwise i would have spent another hour in the car without before realizing <laughs> that my workout was still going That's yeah great. <laughs> that is Great. So even when you can't automatically start it, it will detect that you have finished it. Yeah. Uh, theoretically, That's great. officially, it's not supported with other workouts. So I'm not sure if this is a bug or an un unintentional thing they're trying to trade uh, under the wire. But I'm crossing my fingers that it actually shows up in the final release. Fingers that crossed. is super awesome. Since we're talking about developer betas, um, Micah, you might recall that we never actually got to iOS 12 when we talked about the betas um, yeah. on the, the last iMore show. So let's kind of dig in on that a little bit right now. There's actually been a couple of uh, it's new features added in the beta 2. So um, let's uh, go into some details. Um, I yeah. actually don't have my iPhone handy, so uh, I won't be looking at it to figure out, you know, oh, yeah, this and that. But um, Micah, start us off. Yeah, so one of the things um, that I have been getting uh, a lot of use out of are some of the new do not disturb features um, in the past. So there, there's a whole new swath of fun stuff to play with in iOS 12 involving sort of getting away from the alerts and getting away from your phone, including screen time, which I tell you, you turn that on and it is terrifying. I, like it, it syncs all of your devices and shows you how many times you pick up your phone in a day, how many times you get messages, what apps you're using the most. It's quite, it's a little horrifying. Like, oh, you should turn it on, but at the same time, like be prepared for that first gut punch when you're like, I really picked this up that many times today. That's ridiculous. Um, but I want to talk about Do Not Disturb because I've always been a fan of Do Not Disturb. I wrote this really long article about Do Not Disturb While Driving and how it can really change your habits if you let it. And um, Do Not Disturb While Driving is, is still a, a feature that's involved. But now there's this new option uh, called Bedtime Mode. And what it does is you set your, your scheduled do not disturb mode, and then bedtime mode will dim the lock screen, it will uh, silence calls, and then notifications will appear in notification center, but it's not gonna like light up and show you these notifications and, and sort of get, I think as they put it out in the keynote, get your brain spinning on these things and thinking that you need to pay attention to them whenever it's past a certain time. Um, so I really, I think that 
the do not disturb improvements are great. And what's better is that you can 3D touch on either your Apple Watch, if you have the beta, or on your iPhone with the uh, do not disturb button. And you can choose, I want do not disturb turned on for an hour. I want it on until this evening. I want it on until I leave this location, which I think is fantastic for people who might go someplace to like write or work. And then they want to not be bugged while they're there. Uh, until the end of this event. So uh, for podcasters, this is awesome. And I just now, I didn't even know this was a thing until literally just now. I can say that uh, while this calendar event is going on, which in this case is the iMore show, I want Do Not Disturb to be turned on. This is so awesome for me because I always forget to turn off Do Not Disturb afterward. Yep. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's so it's, good. The fact that it, it remind it, it, it disables do not disturb when you're done with with whatever your event is for me is the the most important thing i'm the yeah. same way i set do not disturb on <clears throat> my devices when we podcast and and i always forget to turn it off and you know someone will chat me in the slack channel and i'll just oh an hour later sorry <laughs> you needed my help and i didn't notice because i had do not disturb turned on and i didn't get that notification so that's my favorite addition to the do not disturb um uh, features. I also like you can set do not disturb to 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 be on for like a period of time. So you can, I don't. So I haven't tried all of the different times of the day, but I know that you can at in the evening you can set do not disturb and it'll stay on until the next morning. And in the morning you can set do not disturb and it'll stay on until the afternoon. I don't know what happens in the middle of the day though. Oh no, actually it's the morning that I haven't tried. It was the middle of the day that I tried it and it said, do you do you want this turned on to, to stay until the evening? I don't know the exact hour, but it will, it'll then just, it'll stay. So let's say it's like noon and you want just do not disturb on while you're working for the rest of the day. It'll stay that way until five o'clock or so. And then it'll actually disable so that you you can get your notifications again. So that's another great feature too for people who want to block out sections of the day if they're doing homework at nighttime or if they're at work in, in the daytime or something like that. So yeah, that's yeah a, those are really good. Nifty feature that I'm happy about. Um, we did talk a little bit about FaceTime. Uh, of course, FaceTime now lets you talk with up to 32 people at once, which is my absolute nightmare to be on a video with 32 people. Uh, but it's we we played a little bit with it, um, the three of us and our colleague Joe Keller, and it seemed to work pretty well. Um, there are, of course, still bugs, but hey, it was uh, pretty good. Uh, Memoji we did talk about, and Animoji, I believe, um, mm -hmm. their new Animoji, which is fun. And uh, I don't think I've seen either of your Memojis yet. Um, you've no? seen mine, I've complained about them. Uh, they, mine does not, I, I, there's, there aren't options that get one to look as like me as Bitmoji does. And so I'm a little disappointed, but it's still fun. Interesting. I I'm pretty happy with my emoji. I feel like it's it's pretty good. Um, although I do I like. Here's the thing where I get a little bit frustrated is that I think that the the Wii controls, like Nintendo's Wii, like me uh, designs, go a little bit too in depth. Where it's like move the mouth up or down one centimeter. Uh, but I would love like app one of the places where Apple's kind of a little bit lax on is like nose sizes and eyebrows and, and like foreheads and width. Yes, exactly. Sideways, not just length. Uh, and some of that is, I know, I don't think people actually really want big noses in their cartoons. Most of them don't, but like some of it's just fun to play with. Like sometimes you want to build something that's true to life and you need a big nose. You don't need just three different versions of a button. Uh, <laughs> and this is, this is again, this is beta, right? I'm sure they will add more features as time goes. I'm sure they'll fix the longer beard. So they don't just look like a big puff on your chin. <laughs> uh, but until that time I can be like, ah, oh, you know, if this would work and this would work, that'd be great. So I, unlike you, was smart and didn't download the beta on my iPhone 10 because that is my daily driver. <laughs> um, though it sounds like it's super stable, and I know you've both commented on the fact that the dev beta for I, for iOS 12 is actually real, real good, real solid. But I'm still too scared to do it, so I haven't, I haven't tr tried a, a Memoji yet. But <clears throat> I sort of assumed that this idea of Memoji was more of a stylized version of yourself and not intended to look exactly like you, sort of like the way Bitmoji works in that it's 
there the features are all kind of the same and you can sort of interpret your own look into it but um it's all supposed to look like a bitmoji and uh you know nintendo did a similar thing with its um Oh, I'm going to forget the name of it. Yeah, hopefully you can remember, as someone can help me remember the name of the Nintendo uh, Me game that they that they put up and that eventually actually just stopped. They stopped supporting it because nobody was using it, I'm assuming. Um, they're, they're, they're stylized, so they're kind of supposed to look like a particular cartoon character, not so much like us. And like we've been able to interpret ourselves into them. But uh, I, I never really thought of it as something that, yeah, you know, Apple should make it so that I can make a cartoon version of my exact face. Just something that's more like I can make a cartoon version of kind of what I look like. I think there's a fine line. And I think <laughs> Apple hasn't hit that fine line yet. We're still a little bit too far in the not enough options range. Um, because like I have other friends who are people of color who have stubble on their face. And their Memoji and my Memoji would look incredibly similar because of that. And that's not enough diversity. Like I, I would, I still want mine to be unique to me to some extent. And so that's, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like I don't need it to like some of the, I think the Samsung phone, phones do like take a photo of me and then make a representation that looks exactly like me. I don't want that. I just think, uh, I think Bitmoji did a really good job of finding that line because when I look at my Bitmoji, I see myself in that character. When I look at my Memoji, I see any brown dude with, a, with stubble and hair like mine. And that's not fun. Like I, I want it to be a little bit more me than it is right now. So yeah, I think Serenity, you're right when you say that uh, we'll see more additions to it um, over time as Apple is sort of finding it. But uh, I think I've said this before, I give them props uh, when it comes to women of color, especially uh, hair types. Those are notoriously left out in a lot of ways and Apple put uh, quite a few of those in the Memoji options. And so that was, that was pretty cool to see. Um, Let's go ahead and move on to talk about uh, notifications because this actually, whenever this feature was announced on stage, I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then seeing it in practice and using it in practice, it's great. So notifications are now grouped, um, which means that, you know, if you've got six messages uh, from your messages app and then three slacks from your Slack app and three tweets, those are all going to show just in three uh, rows. And so you tap on it and then it'll pop open and show you more of them. Very handy whenever you, uh, maybe while you have Do Not Disturb turned on or you're driving and have Do Not Disturb turned on, when you get to where you're going, you lift up your phone and it boop, 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 displays all that and you can quickly sort of go through the list and see. But even better, is that you can now manage notifications. And this lets you do things like uh, an option called deliver quietly, which is where the notifications will appear in the notification center, but they won't show up on your lock screen, they won't show banners, and they won't make sounds. So you can set things to deliver quietly, or you can completely turn them off altogether. So Apple's giving you that option when you get a notification. Uh, you can make those changes right away, which I find handy because in the past, what I would do is if I got a notification from an app that I didn't want a notification from, like say a restaurant app or something like that, as soon as I got that notification, I'd go and delete the app. Like you don't get to just pop up and offer me deals on my screen. I don't like that. <laughs> or for me, sometimes I would I would be using an app that I like and I like getting the notifications for it, but then maybe I would kind of slack off a little bit and like, I know I'm drinking water. I don't need a notification every couple of hours to drink the water. So I might, I might want to sort of disable either disable it altogether, the notification altogether, or maybe I just don't want the, the notification to pop up and maybe it's okay that if it shows me the little banner on the, um, on the apps itself, the little, red dot that says you got a notification or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so having those kind of options of how you want to address your notifications is really great. And the ability to quickly um, triage notifications that you end up not wanting that you thought you wanted and then you decided you didn't want, but you still want to use the app. I think like those are really great additions to that. Um, I actually purposefully turn off notifications for almost everything on my phone because 
I don't want to be distracted by 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 my phone or my my iPad all the time. Um, work related chats are always there, and and text messages are always on. And of course, when uh, uh, for for the uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, I have the notifications for that turned on. But nice. that's it for me. Um, if uh, with iOS 12, I can definitely see myself turning notifications back on for for some apps that I would like to get notifications for, but felt like it was taking too much of my time and distracting me too much so that they're there and I can address them quickly or change my mind and disable them or just send them to quiet mode, deliver quietly. These like just having these options makes me feel better knowing that I don't, I don't have to either be bombarded by notifications all day long or not get any notifications anywhere. So it, it's, it's a nice, um, it's a nice way to kind of compromise paying attention to your phone and not paying attention to your phone. Uh, so I'm looking forward to how that's gonna work. Again, this is on my, I have iOS 12 on, on a secondary device. So I don't use it regularly enough to know how much it's making a difference for me. But I think what I might do for, for the next couple of months is switch over to that secondary device so that I, I really do get a sense of how much I'm, I'm using it. Like screen time, for example, which I, I don't think we talked about yet, but this is the perfect segue. <laughs> um, screen time is actually a really interesting feature to help kind of give you some um, insight into how often you're using your phone, not just not just like how much you, how much time you spend on it, but also how often you even just pick it up. So this also relates to notifications because if you're picking up your phone a hundred times a day, maybe you need to pull back on your notifications a little bit. And this kind of gives you an idea of how often that's happening and how much time you're spending in each app individually um, so that you, you can kind of get some ideas on maybe where you know, it's, it could be that you need to or want to spend a lot of time in a particular app, but there, this might not be something you realized you were doing. And this kind of, the screen time gives you this insight into like how you're using your phone. So in, uh, screen time and notifications and do not disturb all mixed together to me are this really great kind of way to help me as a person. And it's just like overall understand what I'm doing with my phone and how much time I'm spending with it and deciding for myself based on the information that I have, how, how I want to kind of interact with my screen time in the future. So today I picked up my iPhone 10, uh, already 36 times and between 11 AM and 12 PM, I picked it up 15 times. Now, this this is still, of course, involved involved with the algorithm, and there may be times like when I had to go to an appointment earlier, like taking my phone from one place to the other. I don't know exactly how cal how Apple calculates these on different devices, but that's still like that. Again, you'll see these numbers and go, "There's no way," and then there is a way that it's happening. And one of the things I just noticed that I really like, um, and it's not showing on mine because I have been pretty good about not doing this, but uh, on Apple's page preview page, it will actually show you and shame you about uh, when you're using your phone uh, past the bedtime that you've set in, uh, in the clock app. And so it'll show you like, you spent 21 minutes on your phone after you said you were going to bed. What's up with that? <laughs> I like that. Well, that's a unfortunate. <laughs> How, yeah, I've only picked up my, I've only picked up my phone 11 times. Oh, excuse me. No, 11 times per hour. Oh, <laughs> it's up in the top right. And it's kind of grayed out a little. Or it's yeah, gray. I've got a, an even hundred total pickups. Yeah. So, you know, we, I, I have to pick up my phone multiple times per day because of the work that I do, because we're actually using our phones to write how to guides or to, yeah. to test apps or something yeah. like that. Now, so, hold on. Now, now you sound a little defensive, Lori Gill. What's <laughs> going on? You think the lady doth protest too much. No, I'm <laughs> well, I figured out I figured out where my pickups came from, though, because I'm looking at this and it's like you had 42 pickups between 9 and 10 a.m. And I'm like, that was the hour when I was arguing politics with somebody on the Internet. And I <laughs> I'd pick it up, I'd write something and I throw my phone down. <laughs> That's incredible. So, so, yeah, it's like you look at that and you're like, oh, OK, well. <laughs> Maybe I should pick up a less violent hobby about throwing your phone. 
I are and he, dear diary today I argued with someone on the internet and I picked up my phone this many times. I like this stuff though. Like some people will I, I've already heard complaints about how this is Apple's nanny state or something like that. And first of all, this is completely opt-in. Um, and in fact, between beta one and beta two, they you have to go back in and turn this on. Uh, eventually, it'll stay on between updates, is my understanding. But for now, like you had to go back in, and it like was completely reset, and you start over. Uh, so for those of you on beta two, if you haven't been checking your screen time regularly, you should know that you'll need to go in and turn it back on. And if you choose to use like the time check uh, features and all those different things, then um, that that is uh, how you can take care of that but i think this is a, this is a good tool to just sort of even if you're just understanding that you are like okay let me let me try this again the important thing is you can't fix something if you don't know anything about it and so to be able to educate ourselves on how we're using our devices like that's the first step and maybe you choose not to change anything that's fine but even being aware of it i think is better than not being aware of it at all Okay, let's go ahead and uh, move on to tell you about our sponsor. You know Thrifter. It's a way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. That means that these are real deals, not those psychological little tricks that some companies like to pull where they give you these fake deals where it's not really saving you any money. Thrifter will save you money. If you sign up at thrifter.com, you're going to get thoughtfully selected deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy Daily. It's all the stuff and none of the fluff at thrifter.com. And Lori is perusing the thrifter.com site to pick out a deal for us today. So instead of picking out a singular deal, let me tell you about Prime Day 2018. It's coming up. I don't actually know the exact date for it. It may not be announced yet, but Thrifter will be covering the you know what out of Prime Day and letting us know all about the big deals. I know sometimes people call Prime Day a garbage dump for Amazon, but I have found some amazing discounts on things uh, that things I would have never bought. And I mean that in a good way. I, I found a really good pair of Bose earbuds for 50% off and it, I wanted them and wouldn't have bought them because they were out of my price range. And because of Amazon's prime day, I was able to get, get them because I could afford them. So thrifter is going to cover that and you can actually, uh, subscribe to the, um, newsletter to get announcements all about um amazon prime day 2018 what's what's going to be um discounted the the dailies the hourlies the minutes all that stuff so um that to me is kind of the big thing that's coming up and that thrifters and at these it's not a bot there are actually we have a they have a team of people who sit there and cover this and write about it and announce it and let people know about it they're on top of this like all day all the time and they will they probably be working for 24 hours straight and they might even do a live stream of it. I think they did that last yeah. year. So, yeah, they go double hard during Prime Day. Um, and there's a potential rumor that suggests that Prime Day may be on July 16th. So stay posted for that. We'll see if that's the actual date that ends up happening. But yeah, Thrifter is a great place to check that out because as Lori pointed out, this is not just sort of a bot looking through social media and picking deals. These are the, this is them finding the actual real deals that sometimes get buried under like the the weird things like uh 500 gallon buckets of lubrication and uh, <laughs> there's just some very strange stuff that gets sold during prime day that people always find which is kind of a delight to see the the weird things as well so yes head to thrifter.com and sign up for thoughtfully selected deals from places like amazon and best buy daily all the stuff, none of the fluff. Thanks so much to Thrifter for sponsoring this week's episode of the iMore Show. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to talk about, we got, we've got we got a little bit of time left, and I do want to hit on this Bloomberg report that came out this morning um, talking about Air Power. So Air Power was the, or is the wireless charging mat that Apple revealed a while ago. And this mat, the cool thing about it is that you're able to charge three devices, your phone, your watch, and your AirPods with a special wireless charging case for the AirPods um, across the device. And what's better, the thing that like sort of makes this value proposition awesome is that 
you can set your device down however on top of this pad and it's going to charge uh which is a little unlike the chargers that exist right now where you kind of got to find the right spot and move it over a little bit and then bzz, it finally makes that that noise and you know that it's charging so or you uh, don't notice and you leave it on the charger all <laughs> night long and then your phone is not charged in the morning yes that has happened to me uh, it's the worst <laughs> it's the worst so there are some uh there's some hearsay in the article about why um the charger is is not ready yet and and it has to do with uh, the stuff that's, it's just the, the the components that are being built into it. They're working on, they're allegedly working on making sure that it doesn't overheat. They're allegedly working on the different chargers that are inside to make it possible for you to set down your device wherever you like across the whole pad. Uh, and things like that, those improvements on wireless charging are what's keeping the air uh, pad, no, sorry, air power pad from shipping. Uh, but now the rumor suggests that we could see it uh, on or before September. So just curious, uh, what are your thoughts on, on air power and maybe just like wireless charging for the iPhone? Do you like wireless charging? Let's, uh, let's chat. So the Bloomberg article, there was one paragraph that really made a lot of sense to me. And actually, it, it really made it clear that Apple is not just trying to make a charging pad. They're trying to make the best charging pad anyone's ever made, which is very typical of Apple trying to actually beat everybody else by having it having it better than everybody else instead of having it first. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, German says, uh, Apple also wants users to be able to place any of their devices anywhere on the charging mat to begin a charge. That ambitious goal requires the company to pack the air power with multiple charging sensors, a process, a process that has been proven to be difficult. So that's ha finally having experience with a charging pad. I, I, didn't, I didn't use, I don't, I don't own any other uh, wireless charging device. So this was my first time. I know there's um, Android users out there that have been using charging pads for a long time, but so this is my first experience with the charging pad. It doesn't always work. You have to manipulate your phone on the pad, just like you were saying, Micah, in order to get it to hit that charging point. And Apple also wanted it to not just charge one device, but to charge three different types of devices, a watch, a phone, a, a, um, a AirPods device. So it's it's got all these different elements packed into it. It's also ha it also has to kind of cover the entire surface of it so that when you do drop your phone, your watch, your your AirPod case onto it, it catches the charge. I don't know if they're going to succeed in doing something this grand, but yeah, I can see why they would take so long to put out this product if they actually want to make basically the entire surface of the pad chargeable so that you don't constantly have to try to manipulate your device to get the connection right. Yeah, I'm with you, Ren. Yeah, I still, I'm, I'm there too. I still think that it's the Apple Watch that's having some issues. That's my that's my guess is that the app like trying to charge multiple devices at much at multiple charging speeds and all of the nonsense that happens with that. You know, uh, I was talking with John Gruber on the talk show about this last week, and it's like, well, maybe we don't want the thing to set on fire if people sit down on it. You know, like there there is definitely some uh, electrical engineering challenges that come onto this. And given again how mediocre most of these charging pads have been, I don't blame Apple from. I don't blame Apple for taking their time to to get this right. Uh, I do really wish that they would stop announcing things that don't make sense. Like <laughs> it's yes. like I I know why they did it. I know why they did it did it originally because they wanted to show that yes, we're also eating our own dog food and making a wireless charger for your phone. You don't just have to buy third party chargers. But it did not work out the way they planned. And it's it's not a big deal. I mean, Google does that all the time. They're constantly announcing things that actually never happen. So it's not a big deal to announce that you have plans to make something happen in the future. But Apple, it, they didn't used to do that. So when they say, we have a new Mac Pro coming out, we have a new uh, air power charger coming out, we expect that to happen and we expect it to happen soon. Mm -hmm. So that when it doesn't happen, you get a lot of 
fervor about Apple not doing what they say that they're going to do. And I, either we as consumers of Apple products need to change our thought process and understand that when Apple announces something, it it means they're going to do, they're going to take as much time as they need to make sure they get it right. Or Apple should just stop teasing us with these great new things that we don't get to see for a really long time. I'm not sure which one I want. I, I like the secrecy because it feels really explosive when they finally do present it to us. And then they say, and you can buy it in two weeks instead of, and maybe we'll have it sometime in 2019. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's somewhere in the future. It's so it feels better when you when you're kind of caught up in the excitement about it and then you can go buy it right away. But I, I also don't think there's anything wrong with them kind of showing us as consumers, their their path going forward of like where they're headed with things. For example, if I'm gonna invest in a phone <clears throat> that has wireless charging, I wanna know that Apple has my back, that I don't have to buy third-party um, uh, wireless chargers if I don't want to. So Apple's saying, yes, he, we are going to have this for you in the future. You know, It's kind of that sort of almost like transparency to the consumer that we know in the future Apple is going to present us with something. It's just when in the future is kind of the the up in the air thing. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I like that approach because I think you're right. Uh, we'll have to sort of accept that um, Apple now occasionally makes product announcements that may ship later, uh, just as much as they make product announcements that will ship, you know, next week. And we've been so used to the other way that we uh, just have to sort of accept this change and then it will keep us from getting angry about it when it doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, the worst thing would be for an air power charger to ship that gets too hot and like burns a hole in my table or something terrible. So take all the time you need. Uh, we'll get air power when it's ready. And in the meantime, there are lots of great third party uh, chargers. I have like exclusively Mophie uh, chargers in my setup and they are fantastic. And they aren't as uh, horribly like specific to where you need to lay them down. Um, so I've liked that about them as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's great. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, we'll wrap up, but I do want to quickly talk about uh, Instagram um, releasing this new interesting thing called IGTV. Uh, what what it is on its face is Instagram's sort of way of getting into like YouTube, like trying to to take a page out of YouTube's playbook. Uh, it's just it's long. It's video that can go as long as sixty minutes, and it's done with partners. Um, so that's interesting. There's an exclusivity to it and it's just a long form video hub where you can go watch videos from Instagram, uh, influencers, all the, all the feedback that I've seen so far has been negative, but I'm curious, uh, you have any thoughts on IGTV, either of you? I actually think I I'm surprised at the negative feedback of this and it, it could be that people are they're thinking of Instagram in, in the wrong way. I think it's brilliant on their part to slowly bring us in and get us into their social media platform and then present us with the competitor for the largest video streaming site in existence. Nobody's gonna ever take over YouTube as as for popularity for, for watching video streaming videos. But if you already have me on your screen, if you already have me looking in your app, and then there's also video streaming, you've you've won just by having me there in the first place. So I think this is actually really smart on the part of Instagram to to have brought this kind of thing into their into their service. Um, I, I guess a lot of it depends on, is this going to be open to everybody? I think it's only, there's only some celebrities that are able to use it at first. Micah, do you know the details on, can I do a, a one hour video right now on Instagram and post it? Is that possible? It's, I, I, it's my understanding that it's people with a business account um, through Instagram, but 
it's also my understanding that anybody can technically sign up for a business account. And so you could uh, work through the process to get access to this. But uh, whenever IGTV uh, first launched and whenever you first launch it, there is a little splash screen that says, watch videos from the creators you already follow on Instagram and find new videos and creators you'll love. So this is definitely focused on creators this is this is people who are making content for instagram and elsewhere um so like mkbhd is on there buzzfeed is on there kim kardashian uh are some of the ones of that showed up in the screenshots <laughs> um but there are quite a few videos from people who have a certain level of influence i think is the understanding now ren whenever we ask you at the end of the show uh where people can find you you all always mention twitter and you always mention instagram I do. so that leads me to believe that you know you have some love for that platform so i'm curious as someone who's uh into instagram what's your take on this igtv uh, I like Instagram a lot and you know what, it may be a huge failure or it may be a really gigantic success. I think it, like most of the other things Instagram has rolled out, like stories, it really just depends on how quickly they can get people on board. Um, I don't know. You know, I know a lot of people who are lamenting, oh, portrait video. <laughs> and all right. So here's the thing. I am a landscape video purist in some ways. I really like landscape video. I grew up with it. And as a film student, I feel like there's a lot of, or a film or former film student, there are a lot of really amazing ways to frame and landscape. But film and video has always been about breaking the status quo. That's why we have like 10 million aspect ratios. <laughs> and I like, as much as it infuriates me to have people shoot in portrait when they don't realize they're shooting in portrait, I think existing creators who know how to use portrait effectively could be really interesting. Um, which is not saying that I'm advocating for portrait mode to replace like landscape for all movie theaters, but like uh, on Instagram, I'm, I'm okay with experimenting with formats. Let's do something fun. Let's, let's make good stuff. Maybe. Yeah. And if, if, if uh, Instagram is sort of being exclusive with um, who can uh, make these hour long videos, it might actually be to the benefit of Instagram and to us as the viewers, because you're not going to look at, 50,000 cat videos of somebody chasing their cat around the yard oh, or something yeah, like this. Yeah. This could actually be like good quality content. It could also just be a platform for commercials. I mean, you know, it, it could go one way or it could go another Well, I, it all depends on, on what the, what the creators are going to do for us. But, you know, Serenity speaking to this idea that these creators could potentially create some beautiful video in portrait to kind of buck the system. This is a great, great, you know, there's a great possible future for it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't actually use the, the Instagrams as much, but, you know, maybe I will. Maybe this will, will draw me in if I can actually watch some good videos that are interesting and, and are more than just pictures of food and feet, because that's kind of what a lot of my friends' feet. Food like. and feet. A Lori Graham Instagram. A Lori Graham. A Lori Gill Instagram. <laughs> And I've noticed that Instagram has had so many feet on it lately, and it just it just destroys it's, me. It happens in the summertime because people are taking pictures of themselves laying out at the beach or at the park or something like that. And for some reason, they always want to get their feet in the shot. Oh, and I just hate it. I hate it so much. I hate feet so much. I wish they didn't exist. Ugh. Well, hopefully there won't be. Well, for those who enjoy it, hopefully there will be some video for them. But for the rest of us, hopefully we won't see a lot of foot videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you are, please don't at me. I don't care. Um, <laughs> please, for the love of God, don't at me. Uh, I do want to give a quick shout out here uh, before we wrap things up. Um, there is a great. Um, oh, wow. Never mind. I don't have a link to that. Lori, uh, you had worked on a an article that sort of helps you with some of the troubleshooting iOS 12, correct? Uh, ooh, you know, I did the troubleshooting macOS Mojave. Oh, um, so I, I we had a, maybe it was Renee. I'm Sometimes sure we have it. It just uh, I don't I didn't do it. Okay, uh. sweet. Well, then let me just uh, I'll put it this way, uh, Jim, if you can sort of 
edit around this sorry uh before we go before we wrap things up i do want to do a quick shout out um if you are using any of the beta software uh check out iMore because we have troubleshooting guides for uh those betas so sort of giving you an idea of what's working and what's not um and giving you a little bit of help on some of those things to look out for and how to fix some of those things that aren't working as they uh are expected to be so you can head over to iMore.com to check that out and all that's left of course is to thank you all for listening to the i more show we heart you and uh we got to thank jim metzendorf for editing the show and making us sound great every week we will of course be back next week but first let's go around and tell everybody where we can be found Lori gill if people are looking for you online where can they find you they can find me at appaholic on the Twitters, A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K. They can find me at Lori Gill at most of the other social things. Excellent. And Serenity Caldwell, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? They can find me on Twitter and Instagram and on imore.com at Saturn, S-E-T-T-E-R-N. Excellent. If Renee Ritchie were here, he would tell you, you could find him at Renee Ritchie on Twitter. You can also check out vector.show to check out all the awesome vector stuff that he's doing. Uh, if you're looking for me online, you can find me at Micah Sargent on most social media things or head to chihuahua.coffee, C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where there are links to all the things that I do. You can find us all on iMore and you can find many of us back next week on the iMore show. Have a great week or weekend, depending on when you're listening, and we will see you next time. Good Bye. Bye.